Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. This is Hey DIY Knitting Podcast, where me, Heidi, does some DIY, mostly knitting. And today we have the recap of the year 2023 and all of the knits I knitted during 2023. So most of them are garments, but for this YouTube version, I also incorporated all of the accessories so this will probably be a long one and I have a list because I have been keeping a list from finished objects and the amount of yarn I have used during the year and at the end you can see if I have been on a surplus, meaning I bought more yarn than I used, or if I'm on the net negative with my stash. And before we even start, I want to just give you a little reminder or disclaimer. I was on a medical leave for a big part of 2023 from uh, end of April the the end of august so i had a lot more knitting time than most people do so when you see these kind of knitting recaps try to remember that people have different situations in life and even though it's very normal to compare yourself to others um it just isn't that useful most of the time and your value as a knitter is not based on the amount you produce in a year. You are just as valid as a knitter if you knit just one pair of socks. Knitting was my safety blanket through the um, tough times of 2023 and that is reflected on the amount of garments I made. I hope you enjoyed this video and let's jump right in. And it seems like on January I finished two objects and those are the Guernsey Genser over here and um, Huvila Beanie. So let's start with the Guernsey Genser. It is one of my all-time favorite knits. I have worn it a bunch this year. It is knit in two strands of Sunday Scarn Sunday, held with Knitting for Olive um, silk mohair. And I love the color. It is like this rose gold kind of feeling with the dusty light pink and the goldish rosy silk mohair. It is a really beautiful combination. I actually have the silk mohair right here, so it was this color and the merino was more pink. So this is the combination it came out. So what can I say? This has been one of my all-time favorites. I have worn it so much. I love it. And it was the first knit that I actually got the really oversized looked look that I wanted. And maybe it taught me something about the fit that I enjoy. And it also has these very wide sleeves. I opted for straight sleeves without any decreases um, and that's why I ran out of yarn but they are worth it for me. I love everything about this sweater. Another modification I made is that I repeated this crisscross cable here instead of another cable pattern. Um, the pattern is from Sandeskarn. You generally have to buy one of their booklets and usually you have to buy yarn for at least one pattern to get the booklet or get to buy the booklet. But yeah, I have nothing bad to say about this. I love it so much. And the another finished object for 
that month was the Huvila Bini. This is from Leni Hoemila's book Urban Needs. And I used this older DK weight. Maybe it's Sandes Garn yarn. I think DK weight merino wool. And then I have silk mohair. And the silk mohair was this really special one I bought from Ara Yarns for myself as a Christmas present a little over a year ago. So it became such a nice color. It actually reminds me of my uh, top here. And it is very basic one by one ribbed hat, but it had a bit different type of um, decreases on the top. And it has a double folded brim or triple folded. And I have used this uh, quite a lot, especially with the other accessories I have knitted. I will show you later. They are hint, they are matching with this one. So this has been used quite a lot. And this is one of my favorite colors. It is this a little lilac-y, dusty brownish pink. That is how I would describe it. But yeah. And on February, it looks like I finished a sweater for my little girl that used Drops Air and Gebhard Karn Puno. Um, I don't have it anymore since I gifted slash sold it to my uh, colleague um, but i have a picture of it here um, since my child is notorious for not wearing any knits um, and the there's actually one two three four other uh, knit projects i finished the first one being this soulmates headband it has this braided uh, look that crosses at the front and i actually modified the pattern to have this provisional cast on so i could seamlessly graft or kind of seamlessly graft it is somewhere here the ends together and now it looks like this the pattern is free, but I think it was, at, at least at the time, only in Finnish. I can link it down below. And I used the leftovers from my Guernsey Genser for that one. And after that, I actually finished a sweater that was not on my Instagram reel. Partly because I forgot about it, and partly because it has been waiting to get ripped out and it is this lento sweater it is getting ripped out partly because i i don't think this yarn works for me uh, it doesn't feel comfortable on and when i get warm i am a sweaty human this starts to smell like sheep and not just a little bit like a lot uh, it is thin sheep wool, so it is. It might be expected. Um, it is knit in penti uh, from Vuonue, and it has a tensile. So in theory, at least, it is suitable for socks uh, because of the tensile. Um, the pattern was nice to knit. Uh, nothing special. I'm. Not super excited about the huge needles. I think it was six or seven millimeters. It's just too much for me. I don't enjoy that big needles so much. And it is very, very open gauge. It should be knit on fingering plus mohair combination. And I definitely think that the fluffier yarn would have worked better. Um, so this will be frogged. And it will probably be socks, because my feet don't get sweaty 
and I don't mind my feet smelling like sheep. So yeah, this was the first blooper of 2023 and it's gonna get frogged. Next one on the list was a Musselboro beanie for my husband and he's actually wearing it. He went to work in the morning and wore his uh, beanie so I don't have it here and I'm not sure if I even have a picture of it. It is knit in this beautiful kind of muted blue color and it is this double folded hat. I actually really really uh, like the pattern and I'm planning on making another one at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I made him a hat but I can show you the yarn. It is by Rosy Green Wool and it is, I think, their Merino Joy yarn. And this is by far the softest Merino I have ever tried. So I will probably use this up for something else. I'm thinking of a collar for my husband. He's also quite picky with wool. So anything that goes for him, I will use. So this was a Musselboro beanie for him. And the last thing I knit in February was a Sophie scarf or Sophie inspired scarf. Um, I did not use the pattern because it is so simple that I didn't feel like I needed to pay about it well, if I can figure it out on my own. So it was just increase, increase, increase in a garter stitch, slipping the edge stitches and decreasing at the same rate. I used the same yarn that I used for the Huvila beanie. So it is this, I'm not so sure what Sanneskarn yarn it is or if it even is Sanneskarn, but it is this beautiful, dusty, lilac-y, purplish pink and I combined it with the same silk mohair from R. And this weighs about 50 grams, it has been very useful and you can just tuck it in your purse and you can have warm neck whenever you need it but it doesn't take a lot of space. And then we move on to March and I finished two objects on March. Both are technically cardigans, but the other one is not. I will explain later. The first one is this Good Grandpa cardigan. It is this big oversized chunky cardigan and I remember enjoying knitting this quite a lot, even though it was on bigger needles and quite a chunky yarn combination. I used Knitting for Olives Heavy Merino and Soft Silk Mohair. It came out in this beautiful, slightly marled look. And all in all, it was very enjoyable project, even though I hate long rows of purling, but it was just so quick to knit. Um, that said, I have not worn this a lot and there might be a couple of reasons. And the first one being that it is sadly a bit too warm for me, just a bit. And not enough that I would try and dye it or not enough that I couldn't wear it, but it's just a bit too warm. And it makes so that it's harder to combine with my existing wardrobe because, well, these might go together, but they still clash a bit. And I might be nitpicky here. Um, you definitely can combine warmer and cooler colors, but it's just that I don't have so many options in my wardrobe that go with this. 
And the other one is, even though I love the buttons, they are so nice, they have this like cork tactile feel, I think they make it look even more worn. What I might do is that I will change the buttons um, to some cooler brown color. So I might get more wear out of this. And also the other reason for changing buttons is that when I open this cardigan, I probably would prefer to wear it open. The buttons are hanging like this, which is not nice. I would like to have them lay flat and nicely and not droop like this. So lesson learned, I will choose other set of buttons and if it still doesn't work for me, I will consider dyeing it with some suitable dye for wool maybe a bit darker like, like gray gray would work very well i have this um, deep gray pants at the moment and yeah but it was a lovely pattern lovely yarn combo would 100 percent knit again and the second project i knit in march was the cardi jumper and I did not definitely knit this in March, but I finished it. I started it already in like October or something, but it was quite a slow beginning since the shoulders are shaped. Um, I'm not sure if it is, is, is it like the contiguous method, but there is this very beautiful line of stitches and the rows get very very long so I was getting a bit discouraged at the beginning and yeah I hate purling so this is originally a cardigan a design by Vertnit but I hacked it and turned it into a sweater I just cast on a few stitches extra here and knit in the round and then I applied the eye cord here all around and it looks like a cardigan but it isn't and this hack made it much more enjoyable for me but I am dreaming of a actually functioning cardi jumper and um, Ines has actually updated the pattern to be more size inclusive and has made some modifications so I will probably knit another one at some point but I have worn this a ton uh, it is very comfortable classic and it literally goes with everything so uh, it is such a closet staple it is knit on a really fine gauge. Mine is probably a bit off uh, on the looser side. So on the next one, I will probably go down a needle size. And I use Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Mohair. That's gonna be a pattern in my uh, knits that I will use a lot of Knitting for Olive and their merinos and mohairs because i love them so that was march and on april i finished a small really small thin scarf for my mom in knitting for olive merino that was left over from earlier projects and i probably don't have even a picture of it it was very slim a uh, kind of similar shape to the Sophie scarf and I used broken rib stitch. It weighed like 20 grams so it was really really <laughs> small scarf but my mom wanted it that way. And the another thing I finished on April was the 06 cable cutout 
by Eleanor Ali Smith. And I was actually a test knitter for this one. And it is this top. And I actually really love the design, but I'm sad to say I have not worn it. And the reason is it is too short. Someone commented on the reels and uh, really liked the pattern and design. Um, but I must say I have not worn it just because it was too short for me. Mostly my mistake. And one of the reasons um, why the shortness is bothering me is the cutout at the back. Because around here is where my bra is. So it is very short. And if I would need this again, I would probably make the cutout start from here and then make it like this much longer. The thing is, I still have yarn left over from this. So I could make it longer if I have the patience. Since this is knit in a fingering weight yarn and the gauge is kind of fine i think i need it to go down to 2.5 millimeter needles or something it was or three i'm not sure but it was kind of small needles and a lot of knitting so it would be a shame to have to rip it out but when it's like this i'm not going to wear it um, so the option is that I will just unravel the, this place and do the hem again or that I will unravel the whole thing and knit something else. I will need to see what feels best at the time. It is pretty and I like the cable knit look. But sadly, I have not worn it. It is a beautiful and really nice pattern. Uh, so if you like the design, definitely check it out. Um, but for me, it hasn't worked the way I hoped it would. The yarn I used is Knitting for Olives Cotton Merino. So blend of cotton and merino wool. Let's see what is the faith of this one. Um, you can leave your ideas down in the comments and then we will jump on the May and there is also two finished objects first of which is levitate wrap oops oh wrong way around it is very hard to show properly I really enjoyed knitting this one I really did not think that I would enjoy it as much, but it was just perfect knitting for the time that I knit this. I started the medical leave on, on May and I had plenty of knitting time at that point. And I just remember enjoying this project a lot. Uh, I knit this. This is Levitate Wrap from My Favorite Things Knitwear. I knit this using Unspun that was second hand and I held it together with Isagra Trio 1. And that was also second hand since I did a yarn swap with my friend Reta from Aloila Knit. So this is basically entirely second hand garment, which is so cool. Um, it is very nice and airy, super light and comfortable. I actually wore this during the summer uh, as an like, outerwear piece. And it is just very nice to the touch. And I like the airy feeling of it. I did a modification uh, on the uh, inside. I added a crochet tie 
Um, if I was not very lazy, I would have done I-cord, <laughs> but I wanted it to be a bit quicker. So here is the crochet and here is the other one. So there was nothing to hold the inside um, on its place. So for me, at least, it kept falling down when I was using the cardigan. So I fixed the problem with this tie inside. At least the wrap cardigans I have used before, they usually have that kind of a system or the one where the tie goes through the loop and back of your uh, back and then ties at the front. So that was a modification I made. I have worn this also quite a lot, especially with dresses and also dress pants. It is just very versatile and just a classic basic piece. I must say that it has peeled uh, quite a bit, you can see here, but that is probably due to the hand sp hand spun, unspun being so soft. So it is what it is. But yeah, I really liked it. I still have some unspun left that I will probably use this year. Next project I finished was this white top in this color that is very easy to guess that it's my favorite because it is almost the same as my shirt. And this pattern is from Knitting for Olive and I really enjoyed it. It was a very simple pattern. The only thing is I was super bored around here. So before nothing exciting happens, um, that is the thing with bottom-up construction that I don't really like because you generally have long pieces of knitting where nothing happens. So my favorites are top-down. Um, but this was also nice when something started to happen. So here, it was very quick. This took me like many months and this took me, I don't know, not even weeks. And it is beautiful. I love the shaping. I really love all the details. And it was, it was simple. Minus from the bottom-up bottom construction, but otherwise, mm, uh, again, very classic, simple piece, and I love the color. The yarn is the Lumoava Silky, also known as Mesmerizing Silk, if I try to uh, translate it to English. And I bought it from Anna ja Eila, my uh, local yarn store. I must say again that this yarn, since it is a blend of merino, very soft, and silk, it peels quite a lot. So even though this is lovely on, I'm not sure if I would use this yarn for garments when I know that it will peel when you wear it, um, especially around where I have tucked, tucked it in, it will, it peels a lot. I have not de-peeled it though, so it might be that it uh, stops peeling at some point, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. And if I remember correctly, I also shortened the straps. Uh, since I made them a bit too long, or they maybe stretched a bit while I was blocking it. So it was very scandalously deep V, which is not my cup of tea. And so yeah, I shortened them and now it's very nice. I must say it hasn't gotten the most of wear since in the summer it is a bit too warm with the, uh, with the wool content. I did wear it um, especially during the colder, colder times of summer. Um, but during the autumn, I didn't know how to combine 
this um, with other like layering pieces as, as much but I will definitely continue to try to combine and find new ways. Uh, my favorite was uh, from the summer or early autumn is to wear this and have a loose white button up and this linen pants with, that were like, well, linen color. <laughs> and that was my uh, summer go-to outfit or early autumn warm days. June I had two finished objects and both of them were garments. The first one is this Minou cardigan and I was a test knitter for this as well and the pattern is from Knitting Deer also known as Louisa and I absolutely love it. It is so nice and I have worn this quite a few times. I mean a lot. It has this beautiful alternating cables and brioche design and it made knitting a cardigan such a joy for me. I just I didn't have to purl those long boring rows. It was just pure joy. I enjoy when knits are in engaging, so something is happening all the time. I used Knitting for Olive, Soft Silk Mohair and Merino. And the colors were... The other one is Mushroom Rose and the other one is Powder. I think the Powder was the Mohair and Mushroom Rose the Merino. And the color is beautiful. And this one meshes perfectly with my wardrobe and it has been very functional and the buttons work very nicely. They are these like um, shell buttons. Overall, I'm very happy with this one. And again, it is oversized. It has uh, bigger sleeves. It is boxy. And those are generally the type of knits I enjoy. And another finished object I had in June was this Yuna top that is designed by Ines from Vert Knit. And I was tester for this also. And now that I'm looking back at it, it seems like I tried to push a lot of test knits out when I was on medical leave, probably because I needed to feel productive. And that is what I will talk in therapy since. <sighs> but yeah, I really enjoyed this pattern. It has this interesting braided rib texture. Uh, it was fun to knit. Although very hard on the hands, uh, occasionally it is knit on quite a small needles and fingering weight yarn. I used uh, Isagel Merlin from my stash. And again, it is a woolier yarn. Um, this pattern kind of needs some wool, but I think this would have been a bit more wearable for me if it wasn't so woolly since um, when it's minus 20 like this week i don't want bare bare shoulders um, but maybe this will be shining when it's autumn or spring like this in the middle temperatures i really like the pattern that it had like short row shaping for the bust and a lot of different combinations on the sleeve and body size. So it was basically almost made to measure. Um, so you get customize your own pattern so that it fits your unique body. And that is what I really like and appreciate about um, Ines's patterns. 
and there was also or is many versions of this there is the one without the scallops and with the scallops and with the bracelet length sleeves and there is also one with straps that has no sleeves so there are options i really like the edge it is cute and it made me do crochet so yay i did crochet and it turned out beautifully I like the look the only thing is that i need to wear a bra that has um, no straps and i'm most of the time a bit too lazy to do that so but i still like it and i have worn it and i will wear it it is just that i don't want to wear it every day because of the bra but i will probably at some point make the strappy version uh, since it cover ups covers up the straps of your bra but overall i'm very happy with this one and i really appreciate the pattern and on july i had only one finished object and it was the twist loop top from other loops it is so nice um I need this using Hjertegarn's Lana Cotton. So it is a blend of cotton and merino wool that I bought second hand. As you can see, if you are looking at the proportions, I made a boo-boo, I made a mistake and I need the back. Uh, I think I needed several centimeters longer than I was supposed to be and that is why the <laughs> armhole depth is quite deep uh, but I actually combated that a bit using a wider eye cord at the edge it still is quite deep and it can sometimes have a peak from your bra but I don't mind since people know that other people wear bras so I'm still happy about it and I have worn this also quite a lot. I think it just goes with everything. I like the high neck design and mine is also a bit wider here since I sized up. I didn't want it to be like super stretched. Uh, and also not like super thin here so that the straps would, would go like bleh. somehow I don't mind bra peaking here but I don't like the strap showing here doesn't make sense um, I have these little clips where you can strap your bra back here and it draws them in so that they don't show while you wear these type of uh, tops and yeah the pattern is very simple very straightforward intuitive even but oh my goodness at the end it was a drag i just it was so boring and so small needles and i think i would not knit this again uh, since it is just fingering weight, small needles and so much ribbing. Somehow ribbing and small needles hurt my hands. But I finished it and now I have a beautiful top that I can wear. Maybe with these pants. They look great together. Okay, now we are already in August and again i have two finished objects listed here and the first one is maybe the biggest mistake in my knitting this year hell slipover when i look at it now it looks pretty but it is just not functional for me 
at all. It is, well, as you can see, I have not even woven in the end since I never wore this and I didn't like the way that this was supposed to go um, that was written in the pattern and I just yeah um, I think it would have been better in the original yarn so I think there was a merino and a mohair um, so it would have fluffed up a bit of those like little spaces between the stitches um, but I loved knitting it. It was very lovely to knit and there is this scrumptious, what is the word, brioche or half fisherman's rib and I love how these look. I just don't enjoy how the edge looks. It, it just looks that there is too much going on and this is just not useful for me in any shape or form. I will probably just frog it and not even try to style it. I have in mind another slipover that I think would work a lot better for me, uh, but I will talk about that in the knitting plants episode. But yeah, if you are interested in this uh, pattern, it was very nicely written, there is nothing wrong with the pattern, except that I just don't like the construction of this side thingy. It is the Helle Slipover uh, from Sannes Garn, one of their booklets. Uh, I'm not sure which one, but I will try to uh, link it down. It might, might have been the DIY one. But yeah, this was a boo-boo and it will get frogged. And the next one is the Rocky Road sweater. This was also a test knit. Uh, I tested it for Kudelmiani Suvi and she's actually writing or has written a pattern for top down on the round version of this. And that sounds amazing since this was knitted in pieces and it has intarsia and that was the first time ever I was making intarsia and it was quite a it was not a challenge per se it, it wasn't that hard to knit intarsia it was just a bit too much of it at one time and too many little skeins to uh, roll over but the end result is pretty and this is like a comfortable hug I have worn this a lot just like I'm home it's cold I will put on this comfy sweater and I was gifted this yarn uh, by Anaya Eila for this test knit uh, and it is knitting for olive heavy merino and the colors are deep petroleum blue dusty petroleum blue or dusty blue and marzipan and I really really like the colors and it goes really nicely with my uh, navy pants. Overall it is very nice pattern. Uh, just beware of the seaming <laughs> if, um, if you are knitting the pattern that is in pieces. Pattern is nicely written but somehow I made a mistake at uh, the pieces were different heights and when you are seaming uh, they need to be exactly the same height and the same amount of rows and I ended up having this so now it has a split 
because the other one is longer. Luckily it was the back piece. It would have been horrible if it was the front piece. But yeah, I have a split in mine. Uh, so that was a modification that I accidentally made. Overall, I'm happy with it. Will I ever make another one? Probably not, since color work in general is not my favorite. And in Tarja, even though it was quite fun to see the pattern forming, it is just too much for my brain. There is starting to be quite a pile here on the floor. And in September there was three, no, uh, four, four finished objects. And the first one being the storm sweater. And it is one of my ultimate favorites of this year. It is big, but not too big, comfy, very boxy, straight fit with textured stitches. It is from Petit Knit and I used, what is it? British wool cones from Woolly Knit and I held the fingering weight yarn double. And if I would knit this again, I would use the Pergunt that was recommended since my combination is probably a bit um, thinner so this would have been a bit more big and oversized and I wouldn't probably have uh, ran out of yarn like I did and I did not gauge, gauge swatch so this is also probably why it is a bit smaller than it was intended to the yarn is rustic and I ran out of it, so I made a decision to buy the same color yarn and knit longer cuffs rather than just make really tiny cuffs and uh, suffer from itching neck. So I bought Filgolana Saga and held it double. And it is really soft and look how seamlessly they fit in together. The, I switched around here. It is perfect match. And I knit the sleeves, the cuffs a bit longer. And here I also used the Filcolana Saga. I think it's lamb's wool, but it is really nicely soft. Not like uh, super wash merino soft but like wool soft this is not wool soft this is wool rustic this is wool soft and I need this neck band three times because it was just uh, I, I somehow twisted it a few times so three times was this was this charm and I really enjoy the thing that Betty Knit does with her neck bands. So I have done it ever since. It is very nice. It is super warm without being heavy or thick. This is not actually a very thick sweater. It's kind of thin layer that insulates you well. It definitely is one of my favorites and I will continue to use it a lot and I feel like this is the one type of sweater that goes with everything it is gray it is kind of basic shape and you can wear it with jeans with dress pants skirts dresses it goes with everything and the next one that I finished was a minto tee and again, I'm repeating myself, but this is one of my favorites. It is so nice and very nicely designed. Again, I was a test knitter for this one as well. I feel like this took for ages to knit, since it is fingering weight and kind of a dense gauge. 
with cables all over. It took a while, but I'm so happy with the result. And I am actually planning on making another one. And that is rare for me that I would enjoy something so much that I would like to make another one and actively like plan to make another one. I sometimes say that I would make another one, but I never do. But I this I will actually probably make. The pattern is nice in a way that I think that I could combine some uh, fingering and mohair or fingering plus very thin lace weight wool and knit this size and get slightly more oversized but long sleeve version of this i think it would be gorgeous and again because i'm a bad knitting podcaster i already forgot to say that yes this pattern is minto tea from knitonomy uh, also known as magdalena and i just i love it i have worn this also a bunch and Again, it is gray, <laughs> it, it works with everything. I used the same Hjertegarn Lana Cotton that I used with the twist loop top. But this was, um, this was actually very enjoyable, even though it took a long time. Uh, I really enjoy the Minto cable pattern where something happens all the time. It just, it is so rewarding to my brain. So, more Mintos coming to your way on 2024, hopefully. And the third thing I finished on September, that was the month we are on, was Summer Girl Socks Test Knit. And it looks like this. I, I think they are on the wash right now. I'm using them a lot. Um, I first knitted the ruffle on the first sock because it was a requirement, of course, in the test knit. But later on, when I knit the other sock, I ripped out the ruffle from the first one as well. So I, will, I only have the upper uh, fold in them as I feel that they fit my style better that way. Otherwise, they are almost like vanilla socks. And I used Moku yarn merino sock for that one. And the last one for September is the May Camisole by Creadia Studio, uh, also known as Nabita. And it is so nice. I really like this one as well. I like these tops that have this kind of shape that is narrow here and goes down. And I really like this pattern. I knew I wanted to make this as soon as she posted the first pics of the design. When she released it, I bought it and I made it. It was very quick and I really like the details. Uh, there is this split hem and the ribbing is done on very small needles and a dense gauge compared to the rest of the garment. So they look very neat. And this was very interesting construction, but I don't want to um, give away too much of the pattern. But if you are interested, I definitely recommend. And I think I might knit another one at some point. And the color is wonderful. Uh, it is this like raspberry kind of color. And it is one color that I'm trying to increase in my wardrobe actively because I love it. The yarn is Sachenmeyer Tensel Merino. It is around DK-ish weight and one complaint I have for the pattern is that there is no clear instruction of the weight of the yarn 
because it uses the Unling yarns and I think it is very hard to sometimes figure out what is the recommended weight um, if you are using some different yarn. That is my only complaint. This was the May camisole. And on October I didn't finish any knits, I just knitted away. On November I finished firstly the Luca cardigan for my little girly and I knitted that in Moku yarn merino sock that is hand dyed in Finland and I ended up selling it to my colleague as well since my child does not wear knits. And after that I finished two sets of mittens. Firstly I knitted these basic mittens. There was no pattern. I just grafted these myself. I used leftovers of Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino and Crea Deluxe uh, Silk Mohair. These are very nice basic mittens that I wear all the time. And the second pair of mittens were a test knit. And they are the Flower Knot Mittens by Laurel Knits. And also known as Laura. And these look quite a lot like the Minto um, cables, but they are done differently. And I really, really enjoy the fit of these and the color of these. They are this, some fluff. They are this deep green blue color and it is just gorgeous. The pattern is wonderful. I really liked liked it and how it is written and again i'm thinking that i might do second pair of these they were super quick loose used quite a little amount of yarn so i might do another set because they are gorgeous i used mominoki sock happy sock yarn in the colorway ink and then crea deluxe silk mohair to get this deeper green color. I also finished some uh, Christmas presents at this point and the first thing I finished was a pair of socks for my brother's girlfriend. They are these Telxinoe socks uh, I knitted from using our hand dyed merino sock yarn. And I'm happy to report to you that they fit and she enjoyed them. I don't have them right now because they are with her, but I really enjoyed knitting them. I enjoyed the, the traveling cables and just, it was enjoyable project, which I generally cannot say about gift knitting, but I may have changed my mind with that. And the last thing I finished on November was the pink sweater. That is the 013, no, 1031 sweater by Ozetta. I think they should ban all the numbered names in the patterns. I never remember them and I always say them incorrectly. So. I have lived in this since November, literally, I love it. It is chunky, oversized, beautiful winter sweater. And I think Azeda, also known as Haley, uh, has done beautiful work with this pattern. It is classic everyday piece and I just couldn't ask for more. I made the modification that I knit the back hem a bit longer and I also did longer cuffs and I used the petit knit method for folding the 
color on this one. Oh, it is so big, it is hard to show you. Um, I used Cascade 220. I think the color was just pink. And Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Dusty Rose. And it is gorgeous. It is quite a quick knit since it is done on bigger needles. I had to size down on needles though since my gauge is kind of wildly huge. And I originally wanted to make the sweater number 26 but it came out comically oversized so I purchased this pattern instead and I would definitely recommend this over that one. I especially appreciate the shoulder detail. It looks so um, beautiful and professional and the generous drop shoulder. Uh, it even fits my broader set of shoulders. And an addition to the November FOs, I almost forgot, is this waffle loop skirt. I had dreamed about this skirt for a while and I'm happy that I knit it, but I'm not the happiest with the yarn choice. Since my yarn has alpaca in it, it would have needed some more structural, structural integrity maybe from silk mohair or some like non-stretchy fiber since as you can see already the hem has gotten a little wider from walking i still love it though i still wear it but if i will knit it again i will use some type of yarn that is not going to stretch as much and this is also a bit itchy, even with stockings or like tights. But it's still pretty and I still like to wear it. So here it is. The pattern is from Other Loops and her patterns are not size inclusive. I realized this only after purchasing this. So I will probably not purchase her patterns in the future. And I would advise you to consider purchasing if that is an important value for you. So consider if you want to purchase a pattern from someone that is not size inclusive. And the yarn I used was this alpaca wool blend from Suvitien Kotieläintila, which is a farm in Finland. And then we are in December. I actually did not finish any garments or accessories for me in December. Um, I finished a twisted headband for my friend. I don't even have a picture. Then I finished the Stella quilt cushion and a collar for my dad as a Christmas gift and the quilt cushion was also a Christmas gift for my mom and then I knit a tiny sweater for my husband and a rug for our elf house and you can check this video here or this I don't remember which way it goes uh, if you want to um, know more about these Christmas knits. I just talked about them uh, on the last episode. And there you have it. That is all I knit in 2023. And as I said in the beginning, I have uh, measured all my, uh, all my yarn. Uh, I measured it in grams and everything I bought everything I gifted or sold, everything I knitted, I have counted here. First three months I was on surplus, uh, so that means I bought more yarn than I used. And then I was on the negatives until December, because there was the 
Helsinki Urban Yarn Fest and I also bought yarn for the um, Moonflower Pullover test knit. So I was on a surplus there. But overall, I managed to um, lessen my stash by 3.5 kilos. And I think that net negative is good. I know that I would have had a much bigger uh, net negative if I wouldn't have bought so much yarn. But overall, I feel like um, it means that I have decreased my stash during the year. And that is a good goal, at least for me. And I'm trying to keep it that way as well uh, for this year. And I will keep counting everything that comes in and goes out um, this year. That was all. It feels like that is a lot of new knits. And I'm not sure what I think about it just yet. I will have a week or two and just let it simmer and then come to you with knitting plans and intentions for this year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a like, comment, uh, tell me what you think about my knits, what was your favorite and hopefully we will see you again soon. Bye!